Hello, my name is Latasha and welcome to my channel. So first, if you are new here, thanks for joining and please subscribe if you would like and leave a comment down below of what you think of the book I'm about to review. And if you are already subscribed, thank you for coming back. So today I am going to be reviewing The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I love this cover. I know most of the other cover that I see on booktube is the purple one, but I saw this one and I had to pick it up. I really like the inside of the sleeves. You can see it has the keyhole. And then on the back, it has the key. It's really pretty. So I definitely had to pick up this copy. But I'm gonna go in about the Paris apartment. I'm going to start off with a basic overview of the book and then go into my non-spoiler review. And then I'll go into a little bit of spoilers. I'm not gonna spoil the ending exactly, but I will let you guys know what I thought the biggest twist was to see what you guys thought about it. So first, the overview of the book. So the Paris apartment follows a lady named Jess who is coming from England to go stay with her brother, Ben. And they have not really spoken to each other too much over the years and he is living in Paris and she just needs to get away for a little bit. So she rung him up and asked if she could stay with him. So he was supposed to be at the apartment waiting for her. She could not get a hold of him while on the way to the apartment. And when she got there, she still couldn't get a hold of him. So she started to worry and the logical thing for her to do was to break into his apartment. So she picks the lock, breaks into the apartment, and she finds a lot of clues the moment she walks in that just shows that something was wrong. So I'm gonna read from a list because there's a lot of clues that just right off the bat happens. So there is a chemical smell, blood on the cat, missing towels, a missing curtain, he left his wallet and keys. And that's a lot to put together and she still doesn't seem extremely worried at this point, even though all those things are still in his apartment. As time goes on, she does start to get more worried since she can't get a hold of him. And she's been there for, I think, a day when she starts digging a little bit more. And she goes to try to talk to the other neighbors that are in this apartment complex, and they are very unhelpful. And it switches between the points of views of each neighbor. So she doesn't know this yet, but us as the reader know that they don't really like her brother too much. So. The rest of the story is just us trying to figure out exactly what happened to Ben and her journey on figuring that out and what she could get out of the neighbors. So for my review overall of the book, it was a very easy and relaxing read for a murder mystery. There was one twist in the book that surprised me a lot and I'm pretty sure it wasn't supposed to be that surprising of a twist or like the big surprise twist of the book, but it was the biggest surprise for me. The chapters were very short, switching from neighbor to neighbor, which was very nice to have those natural breaks in the book where I could just put it down, read a few pages, put it down if I needed to, and not have to actually find a spot that I needed to stop. So it made the book reading more enjoyable just from those breaks in the book. The one thing that bothered me the most, I think through this whole entire book was all of the love interests. They made no sense to me because she was only there for like three or four days and she almost kisses one and then hooks up with another. Like it just, it did not make sense to me why those were even in the book. It was, it seemed unnecessary and it kind of took away from the story. I did not enjoy it 
maybe other people do enjoy those little love interests within there, but I did not enjoy that at all. Even though I didn't like the love interest part of the book, just from my enjoyment of the read and how easy it was and how engaged I was in reading this book, I do give it a four star. I'm not sure what would have made it a five star. It was just a type of book that I, I could not put down and I really enjoyed almost all of the twists. I recommend picking up The Paris Apartment if you haven't already. And those of you who have read The Paris Apartment or who just wanna know what happens, uh, this is gonna be the spoiler section. I will put up a little banner saying spoiler so you know that this is the part that I'm gonna tell a little bit of the twists in the book. So the twist that surprised me the most was that all of these neighbors were related. I don't know if it was supposed to be that surprising or if there were hints throughout the book. If there were, I did not catch them. And I was shocked when she found out that they were brothers and sister and the parents like, no, had no idea that that was gonna happen. And I really enjoyed that twist because it threw me off and I like when a twist sneaks up on me and is able to surprise me and is not very predictable. Again, it might have been predictable to other people. I'm not sure if I just missed the hints. The twist at the end where Ben is alive, I'm thinking that was supposed to be the big surprise and the big twist, but that one was very predictable to me. I've read The Hunting Party and just from how those twists happen, I wasn't expecting him to be dead with how she was setting it up at the beginning of the book. There was a lot of hints that Ben was dead and I don't think those hints would have actually been there if he really was dead, if that makes any sense. Um, so I think because of that and knowing her writing style to begin with, it was a big clue that he wasn't dead to begin with. I'm not gonna give away the other part of that twist of the ending. I didn't see that coming, but I wasn't very like shocked or surprised about it. It was kind of eh, but again, the family thing, that's what threw me. Yeah, the ending wasn't as satisfying as I would have liked it to be. And then the romances. I don't understand why Jess almost kissed Nick. That was unnecessary. Why Jess ended up hooking up with the detective, also unnecessary. And then we have Mimi's roommate, I forget her name, and Antone's wife. I, I just don't understand why there was so many little relationships thrown in there that didn't have real meaning to them. They didn't have a necessity to actually be in the story. The only one I could think of that actually was necessary would have been Ben's and Sophie's just because it would have given her a reason to keep him alive because she felt bad and had an emotional connection to him. But other than that, none of the other romances made sense and I wish none of them were in there. I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more, not only just being the romances between them, but the fact that she was only there for a few days and she's already having these type of feelings for these guys. Her brother is missing. Like I know she, in the book, she even says that this isn't the time for her to be thinking about this, but the fact that she's only there for a short period of time and her brother's missing and she's thinking about this, it, it didn't feel very realistic to me. But overall, I did enjoy the book, even though I have a lot of criticisms about it. I do enjoy it. I would definitely read from Lucy Foley again. I enjoy her writing style. If you've read The Paris Apartment, what was the biggest twist that caught you off guard? If any of them caught you off guard, please leave them down in the comments below. I would like to see which ones other people found more surprising or the most surprising. I have a feeling that the one I found the most surprising isn't gonna be the same as everyone else's. That is my review for The Paris Apartment. I hope you guys liked it and I will see you next time.